Friends from the Forest. It was summertime in the hills. The oaks had shed their old leaves and were preening themselves in their shiny new attire. There were plums on the plum tree, apricots on the apricot tree. A soft wind sighed in the pines. The birds were the first to notice that someone was living in the old cottage on the hillside. They twittered excitedly among themselves. Someone's there, someone's there. Not a ghost, but a real boy and his parents. They had taken the cottage for the summers. Romy was recovering from an illness, and his parents thought a month in the hills would do him good. He needs some good clean air, said his father, and it will do us good too. You need a break from your school, my dear, and I need a break from the office. It gets cold in the garden, said Romy's mother, a school teacher. But there's this beautiful window in the front room and the sun comes pouring in. I'll turn that long window seat into a comfortable bed. And with cushions and pillows, she made a comfortable nook where Romy could rest, read, write down things, or just look out at the forest. He was 11, a little lean after his illness, but otherwise a sturdy boy who took part in school sports such as volleyball and cricket. But most of all, he liked to draw. Given a pen or pencil and a sketchbook, he would be happy for hours. The window seat was an ideal place for the young artist. He began by drawing the trees and the clouds over the mountains and an eagle high up on the sky. I wish that eagle would come closer, he said to himself. But eagles keep to themselves, not so much the crows. It wasn't long before an inquisitive jungle crow perched on the windowsill, cocked its head to one side, and looked at Romy's crayon box and drawing materials. Were they eatable, he wondered. Good morning, Mr. Crow, said Romy. What can I do for you? Ka ka, said the crow, picked up a crayon and flew off to the nearest tree. Why don't you close the window? asked his mother. I like it this way, said Romy. And presently the crow flew back, dropped the crayon on the window seat, and took off in a huff. The crayon wasn't eatable, his next visitor was a squirrel. It ran along the window ledge, stopped when it saw Romy, and stayed very still. I must draw you, said Romy, and began making a quick sketch of the squirrel. The squirrel did not stay for long, but Romy had already done an outline of the little creature, and he would finish it later. The next day, Romy was back on his window seat, and this time he kept a biscuit on the sill. The squirrel came along, looked at the biscuit, and was about to examine it more closely when the crow landed on the windowsill, snapped up the biscuit, and made off with his prize. Sorry, said Romy to the squirrel. These crows are too sharp for us. And he held a peanut for the squirrel, who received it very graciously and carried it off to her residence in the oak tree. What is there for me to draw? wondered Romy something that will sit still. He went into the garden and looked around. There were butterflies floating about and settling on flowers, but none of them would stay in one place for more than a minute. Then Romy spotted a praying mantis, a long-legged insect with a slender neck and protruding eyes resting on a bright red dahlia. Praying mantises are never in a hurry. Romy sat on a garden bench and drew a picture of the strange-looking insect. Then, exploring the garden, Romy came across a little lizard sunning itself on a rock. He drew the lizard. The lizard raised its head as if to pose for its portrait. Every morning, day after day, Romy came to the window seat. He had recovered from his illness, but he liked sitting there, watching the birds, the squirrels, the insects. How peaceful the forest seemed. Just the occasional call of a bird or the buzzing of bees or the chirping of crickets in the grass. Then suddenly, early one morning, there was a commotion. There was a sharp animal cry and a small barking. A deer sprang into the clearing below the cottage, ran about in a panic and got entangled in some wire netting that had been put up to protect a vegetable patch. Romy saw it from his window seat and ran outside, shouting for his parents. Together, they released the deer and calmed it down. But it seemed reluctant to return to the forest. It has been running for its life said Romy's father. Maybe a leopard was chasing it. Let's keep it here then, said Romy. In the storeroom, said his mother, and they took it into the storeroom and shut the door. 
I can't see any leopard around, said Romy. They know how to conceal themselves, said his father. It could be watching us, waiting for us to release the deer. As the evening drew on and it got dark, they heard the leopard as it prowled around on the hillside, waiting for the barking deer to be released. It gave out a low rasping sound, more grunt than growl, but they could conceal themselves behind rocks and in narrow ravines. The next morning, Romy was up early to see if the barking deer was all right. The little deer paced about nervously in the storeroom. It wanted to return to its friends and family. Shall I let it out? asked Romy. The leopard must have moved on by now. No, it could still be about, said his father. Wait until tomorrow. Romy's mother brought the deer milk and bread, but the little creature refused to eat. It appeared to be as frightened of humans as it was of big cats. And the next day, when they opened the door of the storeroom, it dashed outside and fled into the forest. Let's hope it gets home safely, said Romy. The forest is its home, said his mother. It is only humans who live in houses. Romy's visitors began to increase. A pair of whistling thrushes turned up in the garden and sang to each other. They gave a performance every evening. Just like fallen stars, said Romy. And at night, there were other bird calls. The tonk-tonk of a nightjar. The mellow toot-toot of an owl. The owl had made its home in the roof of the cottage, but they seldom saw it except when it sometimes emerged from the rafter in order to snap up an unwary mouse. Romy drew an owl. He drew a bat, a tiny bat that he found hanging upside down from the railing of his bed. The monsoon rains arrived early that summer, and moths and beetles and other insects flew in from the open window, and finally they had to keep it shut from the mist and wind. The beetles were of many shapes and colors. Romy drew them all and colored them with his crayons. His father brought him a paint box, and he made watercolors of the forest. He drew a barking deer in flight, and a leopard about to leap out from the bushes. The holiday period slipped away and soon it was time to return to the city in the plains. Back to school, said his father. You can start playing cricket again. Can I join an art school? Asked Romy. His father was surprised, but not displeased. Of course, when you're a little older. In the meantime, keep drawing and painting whenever you find time. As they were leaving the cottage, Taking the path through the forest, Romy pointed at the crest of the hill. Look! he exclaimed. There is the deer! Sure enough, the little barking deer could be seen grazing on the hillside. Is it the same one? asked Romy. I think so, said his father. The deer took no notice of them, but Romy waved to it anyway. He came back the following years to renew his friendship with the creatures of the forest and he continued to draw pictures of the birds and animals and insects. At school, he won prizes for some of his artwork, and when he grew up, he became famous as a painter of wildlife. It had all begun in that forest in the hills, at the big picture window that opened out on the oaks and pines and plum trees, and the friendly little creatures that dwelt there. Sometimes, great achievements have small beginnings. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe our channel for more upcoming videos.